think we uh, we should get underway. We're just a tad behind. Um, thank you all for uh, thank you all for coming on this rainy morning. I think this promises to be a a really uh, a really good day uh, for uh, uh, for this conference and for transmission. Uh, let me uh, let me make a few kind of logistical announcements. Um, feel free to get up and get uh, breakfast or coffee uh, as the session goes along. Uh, we'll keep this uh, very informal. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm sure you want to know that the men's room is down that way. The women's room is over here at this end of the hall. Uh, breakfast is uh, is out in the uh, near the elevator. Um, the um, uh, the uh, materials uh, for this session uh, include a lot a lot of wires reports. Uh, we brought as many uh, copies as we could without uh, giving ourselves a backache. But uh, you will find them all on our website www.wiresgroup.com, and um, I am. Uh, uh, I'm uh, hopeful that you find them uh, uh, both interesting and uh, and insightful. Uh, the uh, the uh, 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 the panelists' uh, presentations today will be posted on our website after the conference, and we have a couple of uh, panelists who uh, uh, I think are going to bring their. Uh, uh, materials on a thumb drive. We'll post those as well, although they may not be available in hard copy today. So um, uh, the only thing I would I would ask and would urge is that you have lots of questions for our panelists. We will try to leave enough time for you to um, uh, to quiz uh, our experts. Their uh, their uh, the, the the panels I think are are really uh, terrific. Um, the congressman will be here at 9:15. Uh, I hope you know how that works uh, on Capitol Hill. Uh, we had a bit of bad luck because uh, the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee decided to confirm two FERC commissioners today, and that's happening as we speak. And so we may have uh, we may have some late attendees once that concludes. Uh, it should be a pretty uh, straightforward hearing, and quite frankly, I think. Uh, you'll learn more here than you probably would by watching that hearing, although uh, you, one never knows. Um, uh, so uh, I, would, um, I would just start with, uh, with a few general remarks and an apology for having my picture plastered all over the place. If you look closely at that picture, you'll see what happens if you spend too many years doing energy law. It's really, uh, really <laughs> unfortunate. But um, we have... We have a, uh, we have an, an uh, oh, look at this, how interesting. Gosh, I'm, I had no idea. Well, uh, the, uh, the digital ghoulies have been messing with my computer, so uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, the, um, uh, there we go. The, the whole emphasis on infrastructure, which we're going to be talking about today, uh, has been around for a long time. I don't know if you remember Felix Wright and, and uh, Warren Redmond back the turn of this century. Uh, spent a lot of time uh, urging people to pay, to pay more attention to rebuilding America. Uh, and uh, uh, their, uh, their wishes uh, have largely fallen on deaf ears, although we have invested quite a bit in electric transmission and other infrastructure. Uh, if you uh, if you read the report of the American Society of Civil Engineers, you'll, you'll know that uh, we have a long way to go uh, on most of our basic infrastructure. Um, but um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, question for, for us uh, uh, today is, number one, is, is transmission the kind of infrastructure that we are now focused on? The policymakers on Capitol Hill and in, in state houses, uh, uh, do they believe that, uh, that this is something that requires our attention just as much as roads and bridges and um, sewer systems and other, other basic infrastructure? Uh, I think um, uh, the, the, the grid is fundamentally different 
than it was uh, several decades ago. Um, it's a modern uh, phenomenon what we're talking about. Uh, and if you look at what it was in 1978 and what it is fairly recently, uh, you'll see that uh, indeed high voltage transmission has expanded, has integrated, uh, but we still have a lot of empty space out there in, uh, in transmission, uh, in the transmission grid. Um, what, what I would just say by way of introduction uh, for, uh, for the materials that are going to come and the, uh, the uh, panels that are going to come later uh, is that uh, WIRES uh, believes that, uh, uh, that uh, transmission uh, is uh, something that will give us um, a, a, a very flexible, robust uh, uh, economy, electric economy in the future, and that it provides optionality. Obviously, we don't know what 2040 or 2050 is going to look like, uh, but um, we will uh, be in a position to adapt uh, to the uh, increased penetration of electricity into the economy and uh, to new technology developments if we have a grid that's capable of moving electrons around. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, pan, first panel today is going to spend quite a bit of time kind of setting that stage uh, and talking about uh, what, uh, what that uh, uh, future grid uh, uh, needs to look like, why we need to invest now, uh, and so forth. Um, we, uh, you, most of you, uh, a lot of familiar faces here, so I, I know you uh, recognize that uh, transmission uh, investment is a matter of some of some urgency given the age of the grid and, and uh, the changes in the generation mix, the emergence of new technologies. Um, and uh, you'll hear a considerable amount of, about that uh, today. And um, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it suffice it to say that uh, we, uh, we believe that uh, uh, more sessions like this are needed in order to uh, familiarize policymakers with uh, with the need for uh, for transmission. Uh, the uh, and before I go any further, I want to correct a, 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 a critical omission. We are we are co-sponsored today by the National Electrical Manufacturers Association um, and uh, and the Gridwise Alliance, as well as the Environment and Energy Study Institute. Uh, all of these uh, or organizations are uh, committed, I think, to the idea of providing as much good technical information as possible to policymakers so they can make uh, appropriate uh, decisions. And uh, you, will, uh, you will hear a lot from them in the future. One of the most uh, uh, disturbing and amazing and interesting things I've seen is that my friend Patrick Hughes from NEMA over here had uh, uh, created something called Chutes and Ladders, which is a chart of uh, the permitting process for electric transmission. And it, 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 when you see it all uh, portrayed graphically, you can understand what, uh, uh, what a uh, complicated process it is. It looks more like a bowl of pasta uh, than, than, a, than a planning process, and um, uh, I hope we can maybe put that up on the website sometime soon. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the investment in transmission over the last decade has, has recovered. We spent 25 years not investing in the grid at all uh, and actually disinvesting in some areas. Uh, so we're in a better position, but um, uh, we still have planned uh, transmission incrementally for re reliability purposes largely and we are not thinking about um, about uh, what the future is going to demand of of the grid and so um, grid modernization everybody has their own definition of what that might entail um, is um, is something that um, you're going to hear a lot about and we're going to try and give that some definition today. And uh, 
uh, and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, some things, you know, we talked a lot about siting challenges and various kinds of permitting problems and, and, uh, uh, and so forth, but there, there are things that we don't talk about so much, which is the uh, demands uh, on the system being made by distributed generation, by the development of new technologies that actually complement the grid and could help make it more flexible and adaptive. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, I think we, this session today will focus on that probably more than, than we have in any prior Wires University. Um, today's, uh, today's panels are basically going to attack these, these issues and uh, I hope you're all able to stick around for the whole day. Uh, as I said, the, the first panel, uh, uh, what do we mean by, by modernization uh, of the grid? Um, you know, there, there are lots of wonderful uh, stories out there about demand is flat and we can, uh, we can walk away from the grid or we can all just uh, have rooftop solar and, and forget about investment in anything uh, like uh, the high voltage system that we, we have now. Well, uh, I think you'll find that that is uh, a very problematic assumption and as a matter of fact in many ways the reverse tends to be the case that uh, that we will continue to need the wires network will continue to need to lean on it even if we have and and maybe because we have a more distributed decentralized kind of generation uh, baseload and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, our first uh, our first panel after the congressman has gives us uh, some, some uh, a few words, uh, we'll, we'll explore that. Uh, the second panel this morning is going to look at some of the, some of the issues uh, that uh, uh, the specific things that wires can provide. Um, uh, we're all pretty, I think, comfortable with the idea that location constrained or remotely located wind and solar uh, are typically not near big loads, uh, kind of large concentrations of customers, and, and we need to we need to uh, uh, move that power to to major markets. Um, what we don't talk about again is is uh, the implications of transmission investment or the, the lack of transmission investment on uh, on labor. Uh, we have. Um, uh, I have heard express some, some serious concerns about the future of the skilled workforce in the uh, electric power industry uh, going forward. Um, um, we have, uh, I, I think the number is about 60% of the, uh, of linemen and, and people with the, those, in those skilled trades are due to retire or leave the industry in the next decade. And, and th that presents us with a real challenge. Uh, engineering schools need more, to crank out more engineers, and we need more apprentice programs, and um, the skilled workforce that maintains this vital infrastructure uh, is always uh, a little bit in, in doubt. Uh, and I think the second panel will get into that. Uh, Arnie Quinn from FERC is gonna be here to talk a little bit about bulk power markets in relation to transmission. Um, and so uh, uh, I think uh, that'll be a, a varied discussion. Um, I guess a, another topic that doesn't come up a whole lot is cross-border trade. Um, a, one of our WIRES members from Manitoba Hydro is here to, uh, to talk about um, uh, how integrated the U.S. and Canada are, potentially Mexico, and, and how, that, um, how that generates um, some very... Uh, uh, not only wealth, but a lot of uh, flexibility and and uh, operational um, uh, flexibility for for both countries and both economies, um, uh, and and I, I look forward to that. The third panel uh, is uh, uh, all about capital. Um, we have um, we have a lot of um, uh, a, a lot of questions about. Uh, who pays for transmission expansion? Um, uh, is is do we need a big federal program to fund uh, grid expansion? 
You've probably seen proposals, uh, uh, draft proposals from both sides of the aisle that, uh, that would uh, uh, lavish uh, investment tax credits or other kinds of taxpayer money on, the, on this industry. There, there are some real questions as to whether that's appropriate at this time. That may be very important for merchant transmission. It may not be very helpful to, uh, to other uh, kinds of transmission providers. Um, the real challenge uh, it, that the transmission faces, and we're not spending a lot of time on that today, is, is kind of a dysfunctional regulatory approval process uh, for transmission lines. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about returns on equity. We're going to talk a little bit about some macroeconomic factors that will affect investment in infrastructure uh, and, uh, and some of the uh, unique challenges that, that technology faces in that area. And then we're going to wrap up with uh, a little more on, uh, on uh, distributed energy resources, um, uh, digital technology, uh, and our last panel is going to explore a little more in depth uh, what, um, what is uh, going to be a very uh, 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 profound change in, in the electric industry over the next quarter century, I'd say. Uh, and that is that, uh, you know, all the electromechanical stuff is going to go away. We're going to be highly digitized, uh, and um, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, a system that has uh, uh, think of it as a Christmas tree with a, a lot of uh, distributed this and that and the other on it and uh, storage and demand response and, and uh, uh, how does that work uh, in relation to the traditional uh, wires and substations uh, network that, uh, that we are so used to talking about. Um, I am uh, uh, delighted to uh, to uh, uh, give you uh, as much of a uh, uh, background on um, on our wires projects as you want. Um, I think there are a two or three page summary of what our what our studies have shown so far, and we've got a couple coming out this year that I think will be unique contributions to the wires library. Um, uh, the um, We've summarized them a little bit for you, and we've got some copies over there. Uh, but uh, most of you probably don't want to lug these things around, so you will find them um, on the uh, uh, on the website. And I think that's probably uh, a better way to to access those things. But uh, uh, are there any questions? Uh, anything um, uh, that uh, I can um, field right now? We uh, we are a few minutes away from Congressman uh, McNerney, and uh, if any of you have tried to schedule a congressman for anything, you probably know I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, you know, these folks are so busy, uh, and today is a flyout day. They're, they're all thinking about Memorial Day vacations and going back to visit their constituents. So. Um, We'll leave it at that right now, and we'll be back in, in, a, in a few minutes uh, as soon as he arrives. And, um, and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir? Yeah, you said they're not going to vote on the first kind of nominees today? They won't have a vote today. The, today is just a hearing. Uh, when they get back from Memorial Day uh, vacation, uh, I expect the committee We'll have a business meeting, and that's where they uh, take a vote on the nominees. There are two FERC nominees and one and the Deputy Secretary of Energy. Uh, they will be voted out by the committee, I expect, and then it will go to the floor. So I, I think we can expect um, all these people to be confirmed, uh, certainly within the next month. Um, uh, there, are, because of the quorum situation, uh, you know, everybody's a little anxious to get going, uh, and that includes people on the gas side. There's some major gas pipeline projects that are hung up. Uh, so um, uh, I think uh, I think this will hopefully be accelerated. Uh, 
Well, it depends on how smart they are, I guess. <laughs> uh, they, they, these are pretty distinguished individuals, um, but uh, you, you know, looking at FERC policy from the outside and then getting in there and finding that an individual case has a record about that thick and, and you need to, you know, work your way through the, the data um, uh, and find a staff. and uh, I'd say, you know, the getting up to speed time is probably six months, uh, but they'll start voting right away. Uh, the staff has been uh, generating materials, briefs, uh, doing some delegated uh, orders uh, in the interim, uh, but um, I, I, I don't expect that, uh, that even with a quorum that things are going to happen instantaneously. They've got a lot of a backlog to, to make up, so take some time. Anything else I can do to, I can tap dance. Uh, um, okay, uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with uh, Congressman McNerney, uh, uh, who is, uh, by the way, the co-chair of the Grid Innovation Caucus over on the House side, and um, he's always uh, got some great things to say, so we'll see you then. <laughs>